Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm answering a question now from a paper January 2021 from the new Kill Mathematics P4 syllabus. Well, it's not that new now. We got to 2023. We've had quite a few papers now. This was about the um, the second paper that was released because the first one was in June stroke October 2020 from the days in the days of COVID. Now, this question here is a question I've already answered. You'll find the videos been watched many times and uh, there's nothing wrong with my answer, okay, in the actual video, but there are some points I would like to make and maybe a few um, nuances and different ways of thinking about how to deal with some of these questions, which um, if looking back at my answer before, I wish I had kind of like included those earlier. Right, so I'm going to do this question again. I'm going to do this for a few of the questions where I found different ways of doing things, might be easier or an easy way of explaining, just to kind of like, you know, make it a bit more kind of complete. So I'm going to redo this question and I'll put the link in the playlist for this as well and um, a link in the old video to this video and to the, to the old video from this video so you can compare. Now, it says the curve C is defined by the parametric equations x equals 1 over t plus 2 and y equals 1 minus 2t over 3 plus t where t is greater than 0. So we got to show that the equation of C can be written in the form y equals gx. So we have to convert this from parametric form into Cartesian form. Okay, y equals g, some y equals some function of x, y equals g of x, where g is the function gx equals ax plus b over cx plus d and x is greater than k, where a, b, c, d, and k are all integers to be found. So we have to rewrite this and write it in this form with y in terms of x. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think a little bit first. I want to end up with it, with it saying y equals, right? y equals some function of x. Okay, um, first of all, a parametric equation is basically an equation which is uh, where you are... Def uh, describing a graph using three parameters x y and t right rather than a cartesian equation which this is where you're describing in terms of two parameters which is in this case y and x all right so now um how do i re kind of rewrite this in this form well i'm going to keep this as y equals one minus two t over three plus t and i think the easiest thing for me to do would be to write this but with t as a subject so I have x equals 1 over t plus 2. Now if I make t the subject, I can uh, basically subtract 2 from both sides. And then I can, you know, basically cross multiply, which is actually multiplying both sides by t and then dividing both sides by x minus 2. That's actually what we're doing. So t equals 1, uh, 1 over x minus 2. Now what I can do is I can replace the t in this with 1 over x minus 2. And I'll have eliminated the t for my equation, and then I have to simplify it into this form. So I'm going to write y equals 1 minus 2 times, I'm going to have 1 over x minus 2, that's taking the place of the t, over 3 plus, and I'll have 1 over x minus 2. Now it looks a bit messy having a fraction over a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus I'll multiply this out. This is 2 over x minus 2. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking that the 2 multiplies both these. This is like a multiplying a whole number with a fraction. If I do 2 times 2 thirds, that's going to be 4 over 3, not 4 over 6. Okay, it's like 2 over 1 times 2 over 3. Same thing here. 2 over 1 times this fraction. So it's 2 over x minus 2. But instead of putting over, I'm going to put divided by. Same thing. It's the same thing, right? It's just a set of the fraction bar divided by. But make sure I put this in the brackets. I have 3 plus... 1 over x minus 2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these into one fraction. So this, this numerator and this denominator, I'll make them into one fraction first before I proceed. So I'm going to have one common denominator, which is x minus 2. And this is over 1, remember, and this here is over 1. So if I want to make this into a common denominator, this has to become x minus 2, and this has to become x minus 2. So I'll have x minus 2, and then I'm going to have minus... And then this is going to be 2. That doesn't change because it's already under the right denominator. Divided by, and here again, similarly, this is going to become x minus 2. So I have to multiply the top by x minus 2. That's 3 times x minus 2 
plus this is already as it, as we want it so i can just write that as plus one over the same denominator plus one over the same denominator okay so let's simplify this first so this is x minus four over x minus two divided by and i'm going to have three x minus six plus one so that's three x uh, minus five over x minus two so now i can actually um write this as x minus 4 over x minus 2 times remember you have a division so you write the reciprocal of what's after the division sign and change it to a multiplication sign so times x minus 2 over 3x minus 5 the x minus 2s cancel out and we're left with y equals x minus 4 over 3x minus 5 okay so now we can write that therefore g of x is equal to x minus 4 over 3x minus 5 and we're almost there so we have a is basically 1 and b whoops b is ax plus that's minus 4 and c is that 3 there and d is minus 5 that's 3 and d is negative 5 so ax plus b over cx plus d right so all we're left to do now is find what the x is greater than k the k is x is greater than k we've got to find what k is right so we've got these sorted out now how do i work out what the basically it's, it's the domain of this function this represents the domain of this function okay now the domain of this function okay some people might say oh it just says x can't be whatever makes this denominator zero. Okay, so for example, 3x minus 5 equals zero. So x equals minus 5 over 3. So it's everything except for this value. However, that's not true as we can see from the form of the answer. Because why? Why is it not true? Because the original function had a restriction on it. And that restriction was this. That restriction was t is only greater than or equal to zero. But what we need to understand and what I didn't really mention in the last video is that the x part of the parametric equation represents the domain of the original function. And the range, the y part, represents the range of the function. Okay? So this is the domain of the function. This is the range of our function. All right? So the, the output of the x is the domain, and the output of the y is the range of the function that we're dealing with. All right? So... Um, you know, when we write it in Cartesian form, okay, this will represent the domain of the Cartesian equation, and this represents the range of the Cartesian equation. So I know that x equals 1 over 2, t, x equals 1 over t plus 2, where t is greater than 0. That will tell me, the, you know, the, basically the output of this will tell me what the value of, what, what this is going to be. Okay, so it's like we're plotting x against t. It's like we're plotting x against t. That's like that's that's kind of like what we're doing here. We're plotting x against t. So this is the x-axis, and this is the t-axis when we're talking about this part of the parametric equation. Yeah. So this is x, and this is t. So if we were to plot this graph, if we were to plot this graph, um, we can see it's a reciprocal graph. We can see that. Uh, when t equals 0, it's undefined. So t equals 0 is this vertical line, sorry, because this is, you know, x against t. So this is t equals 0. So that's one asymptote. And the other asymptote is going to be when x equals 2, over here somewhere. Okay? So one asymptote is when x equals 2, and the other asymptote is when t equals 0, when we're plotting this graph here. All right? So as we know, this is, you know, plus 2 is raised up. And normally we say y, but in this case, it's, it's x equals in terms of t. Now, also, this is a positive in front of the, uh, if it was like, you know, it's a positive in front of this. So I know it's going to go on these two sides of the asymptotes. So it's going to be going like this. And it's going to be going like this. Okay. We can work out what that is if you want to. We know that when um, this is when, uh, x, when, when um, this is when x equals zero, when x equals zero, then you have t equals minus two. This would be minus two x equals 0, you have minus 2, um, t equals, no, minus a half, sorry. Okay, when x equals 0, 
you have one over t plus two, so you'll have one. You'll have minus two equals one over yeah t equals minus a half. We don't need to know that actually in that right now, but just just for your information. Okay, so now because t is greater than zero, I'm going to get rid of all of this. Anything on this side which is less than zero for t, I'll get rid of it. This is our function. Okay, and the output of this, the output of this, what's going up here, that is our domain for our Cartesian equation. So we can see that the the output of this function is what go, goes along the x-axis, which is in this case the the vertical axis. Here the, the, the x-axis is the vertical axis, right? So that is going to be our domain. And this we can see will continue going closer and closer to that, going up forever. And this will be closer and closer to the asymptote at 2 you know, without touching it. So the, the output of this function is going to be from here going on forever. So it's going to be x is greater than 2. So we can, we can say that x is greater than 2. So k equals 2. All right. So that's how we can work out. That's like the new, the new kind of way that I'm explaining. Before I actually worked out what the domain of this function is. Okay. And um, it's a bit more... You know difficult because then you had to work out because t is greater than zero it's like it becomes a bit of a hassle it's much easier if you go to the original okay uh, parametric form and take the x part as the domain and the y part of the as the range which is what we have to do in the second part of the question part b it says hence or otherwise state the range of g okay so again we don't need to actually look at the original function we just have to look at this the range of this this the output of this is our range the output of this with this condition is our range so how do we draw this now this is another thing i would want i'd like to kind of clarify as well some people always ask about what's an easy way to draw these equations without having to especially when they're in this form without having to split them up into the form that x was in okay because when they're in this form over here they're very easy to draw of course and uh, making them into this you have to sometimes use long division or rewrite the numerator. But there is a quick way of doing that, which I'm going to show you now. You have minus 2 plus 1 over t plus 3. So if you want to find the... So here we find we're going we're gonna to plot y against t. And whatever, goes, whatever we get along the y-axis here is going to be our range. Okay, that will be the answer for this. So first of all... How do we work out what the uh, you know what this graph will look like? We have to picture what it looks like to be able to work out the range. All right. So first of all, um, if you divide the coefficients of t when it is in this form, okay. If I divide the coefficients of t or x or whatever we have in this case is t, you're going to get minus two. So that means um, y equals minus two is going to be the asymptote which is horizontal. Okay. So that's how you work that part out. So this is going to be the horizontal asymptote. Okay, let me just make this a bit bigger. So this is y equals negative two. That's a horizontal asymptote. And the and the vertical asymptote is very simple. Whatever makes the denominator zero, which is t equals negative three. So t equals negative three will be our vertical asymptote, right? So the graph will look something like. Okay, it will go. It will go like these will be the asymptotes, right? So t equals negative three. Okay, if there was no restrictions, that's how it would be. Now we want to work out does it go in these two parts? Does it go in those two parts? Now, for us to know that, I mean, really, if we split it up into separate fractions, we can we can work that out quite easily. But if we don't want to do that, we don't want to split up into two separate fractions, and we want to just work it out by looking at this. That's also possible, and that is simply by um finding out where does it cross the axis if it crosses the axis it makes it very easy and this will cross the axis so we can say for example it crosses the y-axis when t equals zero so when t equals zero you have y you can just replace these with zero it'll be one third you can work that out very easily so it's going to cross the y-axis at one third okay so we know it's going to cross there okay so it's pretty clear it's going to be on this side okay because um it's going to be positive here so it's going to be above here so from that i know that it's definitely going to cross on this side right just from that i know okay because this is minus two that's one third it's definitely going to cross on this side it's going to have to be because i know it's going to either be like this or it's going to be like you know these two sides 
So if it was on this, these two sides, this would cross somewhere down here below minus two. So for sure, that's enough for me to know that the graph is going to have this type of shape. And it's going to go to from that asymptote to that asymptote like this. Okay, it's going to get closer to equal to minus three and closer to y equals minus two. Okay, so we know that the graph goes in these two areas now. Okay. However, remember we have this condition that t is greater than zero. So we're going to get rid of any part of the graph where you're on the negative side of this t-axis. So we'll get rid of all of this and all of this. And we're going to start from this point, which is going to be one third, as we mentioned. Okay. And it goes all the way down to the asymptote without ever touching it. So we can see the range of this or the, you know, the output of this y part of the Cartesian equation is going to be, according to this restriction here, between y values between minus two and one third. So that is the the range, okay, of our function. So hence or otherwise, hence using the answer that we got in the first part of the question, okay, which is over here. Okay, hence we could use this, all right, but I think that's a much longer in this particular case. We could draw this or otherwise, okay, we can just use the fact um, that the y part of the Cartesian uh, equation is the range and the x part is the domain. And you see I got the same answer by using the Cartesian form of the equation uh, for both the domain and the range as I did by using these, but I think this is quicker. Right? And I also introduce maybe a, a slightly quicker way of dealing with how to work out the asymptotes and the shape of the graph. That's kind of more related to P3, although as you can see, we have to we use this in, in P4 in this particular case as well. So a lot of P3 stuff should be known for P4. So that completes this question number four, redone, revisited. Question four, revisited, you could say, from January 2021, Pure Mathematics P4. International A-level. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist over here, including the old method of doing it. You would also find um, that in this uh, playlist over here, I will have all the questions I, um, I've collected together from parametric equations, okay, from P4. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and I will link actually the old video in, in this part here so you can go back and see the old video and see how I did it then and compare it to uh, how it is now. I think this is easier. Um, and uh, yeah, so that completes this question. Thank you for watching and see you soon.